Hey there, pen friends! It's your host Amy from Penvenger, and I'm here with another fun pen review. In this video, we will review one very special and interesting fun pen: the Monte Grappa Lord of the Rings limited edition fun pen. Now, this is the box of the pen. It's really heavy, and let's unbox it. Inside we have a very shiny lacquered wooden box. On top of the lid we have the Lord of the Rings and the circle with the inscription that's on the ring. Inside we have this suede leather that's covering the pen and this is the setup that you will find with the pen a bottle of ink. The bottle of ink has this inscription that we find on the ring as well. Now let's remove to see what we have under the pen. And although this video is going to be a little bit longer than my usual reviews, we are going to focus on the details of this pen. Inside we find the care guide and maintenance and this is a very nice and original presentation because it takes reference to the elfish bread called lembas and this is how the elfish people were going to store the lembas bread while traveling and again there is a funny scene when uh, the main character frodo was given the elfish bread and some of his companion were eating a lot of it what they didn't know is that a bite of bread was going to keep a grown man full for days and they eat a lot of it. Well, now let's remove the pan and analyze the details of this amazing creation. Monte Grappa is known to take reference and themes from movies and making them in writing instruments. Well, this is the Lord of the Rings and it is a very very interesting and I could say original fondant pen. If you had asked me, hey this is the movie, try to figure out how the theme of that movie would look into a fondant pen. I wouldn't know how to do it but Montegrappa does it with great success and there are other Montegrappa pens that prove that they could do a really good job. I believe there are two pens that are for the Game of Thrones movie, which I simply love. And let's dive into the details of this pen and I will show you everything in full depth. Then we will go into a size comparison and in the end we will have a writing sample with this exact fun pen. I'm a huge fan of the Lord of the Rings series and I'm pretty sure who is watching this is either heard of it or knows the story. But to keep it short, the story is based in ancient times. The whole action takes place in Middle Earth, this is how they call it, and we have men, dwarfs and elves. 19 rings of power were created and given to the kings of those people like this. Three of them for the elves kings, we have seven rings given to the dwarfs and nine rings for men. Without them knowing there was created one more ring and that is called the One Ring. The One Ring was forged by Sauron himself, the villain of the story. And it was forged in the depths of Mount Doom. Well, the ring is unbreakable, you cannot destroy it, and it has an evil spirit lying in it. In order to be destroyed, it has to return to Mount Doom and to be casted in the lava flow of the Mount Doom. The entire pen is made out of black and white Montegrappa celluloid and it sets off the background for the luxurious, beautiful silver overlay that depicts all of the details of this team. Now let's start with the finial. The finial that we have here is the Eye of Sauron. Although this is only for the movie because in the book there is no physical representation of Sauron, this is done for the movie in order to portray his eye 
which is looking and seeking for the one ring. And Monte Grappa did this very clever and very creative because this is actually moving. It's made out of acrylic, I think so, and it's very, very realistic. On opposite sides of this, we have the two towers, the Saruman's Citadel and also the Sauron Tower with the eye. On the back we have Smeagol and he is dwelling over the ring, he is watching down towards the ring and Smeagol is a hobbit who found the ring and was totally corrupted by the evil spirit that lies in the ring. The clip is shaped like Sting and Sting is a elvish sword that was found by Bilbo Baggins. It is an elvish blade, very light, very strong and actually the blade glows blue whenever orcs or goblins are near you. Under the clip we find the Hobbit house door. Well this pen is full of details and I don't know if you guys are looking for details in those places but I almost almost missed something very interesting. The clip is spring-loaded and if you raise it up like this, under the clip you will see that there is two more details, an elvish leaf and also a pendant and it's practically the necklace that was given to Aragorn by Lady Arwen of the Rivendell and it's a beautiful jewelry piece made out of silver, also in the pen and also in the movie as well. Moving forward, we have under the Hobbit door, Monte Grappa on one of the steps engraved. At the base of one of those two towers, we have the hallmark for sterling silver and 925. Let's uncap the pen and we have the one ring right here. This is removable. I will show you. And this is how you remove the actual ring from the cap. I told you there are many details and this is one of them. I simply love the idea to incorporate the actual ring, the one ring, the ring of power. On this ring there is a very very dark quote which is engraved and this dark translation is only visible when the ring is thrown into fire. Well it is translated to this one ring to rule them all, one ring to find them all, one ring to bring them all in, into the darkness, bind them. Well, you actually can wear this ring if you want to. Uh, as you can see, I'm not vanishing like in the movie, so this is safe to use. And let's put it back and continue with the pen. And we have the nib. This is an 18 karat gold nib, which is left in the natural color of the gold, it is not plated. On the nib there is a symbol engraved and those are the initials of the writer. Well, moving forward we have the section and this is quite practical. You can totally see now the color of the beautiful black and white Monte Grappa celluloid, which is amazing. I, I almost forgot. There is an ebony feed as well. Those are the threads. You can totally grab the pen by those threads. It's not sharp, nothing at all. And we have a step up and what follows is the barrel of the pen, which is full of details. Let's have some perspective in order to understand the details that are present on the barrel. After the ring was inherited by Frodo Baggins from his cousin Bilbo, who took it from Smeagol. It was discovered that the ring itself is that famous one ring made by Sauron. A fellowship is formed in order to take the ring and cast it into Mount Doom to destroy it. Well, that fellowship is formed of nine members. We have Frodo Baggins, which is the main character, his friends Merry, Sam and Pippin, which all four of them are hobbits. Then we have two men, that is Aragorn and Boromir, an elf, Legolas, a dwarf, Gimli, and we have Gandalf, which is the wise wizard. Well, all of them have weapons of choice. And we start with the first detail, 
and above that detail there is a semi-precious green stone. The weapon of choice for Aragorn, which is Narsil, his sword. Moving forward we have the quiver of arrows and the bow, which are the weapons of choice for Legolas, the elfish character. Then we have a staff, which is wielded by Gandalf. Then we have some throwing knives, and I'm pretty sure I've seen in the movie that Aragorn and Boromir used to throw the knives. Then we have the sword of Boromir, and we have the axe of Gimli, which is the dwarf character. Those are beautifully integrated, and behind them there are two armor plates using chain mails and buckles, and those if I'm not mistaken, I've seen them used by Aragorn, but I'm not sure. And of course, I almost forgot a very important detail. Near the piston knob, we have the crown of Elisar, beautifully integrated. And everything is nice about these details because they work together and they are not over accentuated in order to disrupt the overall shape of the barrel. And we have the piston knob. This pan is equipped with a ratcheting piston filling mechanism, the trademark of Monte Grappa. The piston knob is visible in this black and white Monte Grappa celluloid. On the back of it, there is the limited edition number of this pan, and this is a limited edition of 379 pieces. And this number is chose due to how many rings there are, three, seven, and nine. Although the pan is posting, I don't recommend you posting the pan because it's becoming very, very back heavy and you cannot use it like this. I think it's time to put it side by side with other pans, see the measurements and the overall weight of this pan. And in the end, let's have a writing sample. And after that, I will share you my thoughts on this beautiful pen. Here we have the pen sitting next to other pen models. From left to right, we have Leonardo Furore, Monte Grappa 1930 Extra, Visconti Opera Master Crystal, Monte Grappa Lord of the Rings, ASC Bologna Extra in Blue Lucians, Lamy All Star, and last but not least, Visconti Homo Sapiens Pen Venture Exclusive. Now let's have some measurements. The pen capped measures 162 millimeters, uncapped 134 millimeters. The overall weight of the pen fully inked is 107 grams. The cap is weighing 58 grams and the barrel fully inked weighs 49 grams. Grappa Lord of the Rings Ink Hiroshi Zuko Tsuki Yo. The nib is 18 karat gold and this is a fine. The nib performs really nice and it does have a hint of a feedback. Now let's do the sentence. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Now let's see some wetness. This is a medium to wet flow and the nib performs really really nice. I do love the Monte Grappa nibs but this is different from what it comes from their lineup. It has a hint of a feedback, pleasant. Now let's try some flex. This is a quite stiff nib. I wouldn't push it too much. There is a small line variation, but nothing crazy in regards of flex. Now let's try a reverse. We have a fine in normal writing and a quite scratchy extra fine if you need that one. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the writing sample with this pen and now 
I would like to share you my thoughts regarding this creation. I could say that it is not for everyone. First of all, it's not something that you can carry with you on a daily basis. But if you are into exotic things and want to have a conversation starter, a work of art, and you're a fan of the series, this could be appealing if you're into market for an expensive writing instrument. Believe me, there is no such thing as a better conversation starter. Whenever I took this pen with me and someone seen it, it was an instant conversation. What is that? What it is about? And most of the people that run into me and seen me with this pen know exactly what is the pen and what stands for. And they all knew the theme of the pen because you see the eye of Sauron and from there you know it's Lord of the Rings. I love it. I see myself owning such a piece because if you believe it or not, it's not that uncomfortable. I've seen pens that are practically not suited for writing and they are more tailored to being work of arts, but this is not. You can still use it, you can still take it with you, although you will need to be very, very careful not to drop it or not to forget about it put it on someone's desk and forget about it because it's expensive and it's fragile and trust me you don't want to drop this pen because most likely something will break or bend or something like this. If you're into market for one of this down below there is a link for it. It's going to be listed on the PenVenture website and I will give you a good deal on it. Just contact me down below you will find my details and if you want one I will take care of that. I think this is it. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you find it useful. If you did so, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the PenVenture YouTube channel. Down below you will find links for my social media accounts, my website, and also my email. My name is Amy and I'll forward seeing you next video.